Hi, I'm Douglas Hurd from Cisco Security. I help run the Cisco Secure Technical Alliance team, otherwise known as CSTA. Today, I'm joined with one of our longstanding partners, Tufin. Uh, John Moran from Tufin is going to walk through how we work together as a company and going to also provide a product demo. Quick agenda here. Um, I've already done my intro. Um, we're going to talk about our job's going to talk about the challenges of dealing with hybrid networks. And he's going to show you a demo that demonstrates the Tufin solution working with Cisco. We'll summarize things at the end and tell you how you can get more information. And over to you, John, why don't you introduce yourself? Great. Thanks, Doug. Uh, thanks for everybody taking the time to join us today. I appreciate it. As Doug said, my name's John Moran. I'm the technical director here on uh, Tufin's business development team. And um, we'll talk for a few minutes today about uh, some of the hybrid network challenges that we see our customers facing and uh, the Tufin solution, how we can help you solve some of those problems uh, across your, your Cisco and uh, all the way up into the cloud. So the, the challenges that we hear pretty consistently when we talk to enterprise customers really, you know, across verticals, it's first that Teams are, are very siloed by both geography and technology, and it makes cross-functional collaboration really challenging and uh, can, can have a serious impact on both day-to-day -day operations as well as you know, strategic business initiatives. Teams lack really comprehensive visibility into their very sometimes fragmented, very complex networks. And it really leaves those teams to make decisions based on incomplete information. And the result of that too often is uh, we end up with additional and sometimes even unnoticed or, or unmeasured risk. Another challenge is that compliance is primarily a manual process for long enterprises. You have different enforcement mechanisms for each technology, and it's very challenging to, to demonstrate and measure compliance accurately. We all know that manual security processes are slow, they're time consuming, they're error prone. And this has a serious impact on business agility as well as uh, uptime. And these challenges often, unfortunately, lead to kind of a pervasive attitude that security is kind of a business inhibitor, right? It's this black box where your change requests go and they sit there for weeks. And then unfortunately, uh, you know, the answer seems to always be no, right? And so we want to help change that. And that's really what our solution is designed to do is to help large enterprises with hybrid, heterogeneous, very complex networks overcome these challenges. And we do this in a few ways. Really, we deliver a centralized solution that enables enterprises to reduce the risk of security breaches and non-compliance uniformly across the board, regardless of physical location, regardless of technology. We allow enterprises to move with greater speed and agility. That's helpful, as I said, both for the sort of tactical day-to-day -day operations, as well as being able to enable these strategic business transformation initiatives without sacrificing security, without sacrificing compliance. And finally, we allow enterprises to reduce the cost of managing their security, managing compliance, managing risk, and at the end of the day, increasing efficiency and, and the bottom line. As I said, we deliver this value across the most complex, hybrid, heterogeneous networks. That's really uh, where we provide the, the most value, as we're going to see in the demo. So let's jump right into the demo here and show you how some of this actually works. All right, so what we're looking at here is our SecureTrack dashboard. This dashboard provides you an overview of what's going on uh, across your security enforcement points across your entire hybrid network, right? All the way from your on-premise data centers up into the cloud. So we see some very basic information that you would expect to see on a dashboard. We have uh, information about how many rules and devices that uh, you have in your environment. We can see what recent changes have been made, right? So uh, how many changes have been provisioned out? How many rules have been modified recently? We have here this uh, access and uh, certification pane and fortunately, uh, you know, we're going to be doing a very brief demo, uh, so we'll have time to get into everything I'd like to show today. But we do a very uh, robust um, access certification and recertification process within Tufin that allows you to, uh, for compliance or just general security purposes, 
uh, set time frames on rules or uh, set a period where a rule needs to be recertified. So we need to go back and maybe certify this access uh, annually or, or biannually. And we can track all that and show it to you uh, right here in the dashboard. And you'll also see uh, some trends down here. So we have this section here, which is rules for cleanup. Now, as part of what we do out of the box with no additional configuration required on the, on the user's end, we're going to start evaluating all of your security policies for general misconfigurations or things that might be considered kind of um, uh, suboptimal sort of network hygiene, suboptimal configurations, right? And we'll identify those here as rules for cleanup. So this is going to be things like rules that you have that are disabled or unused or rules that are fully shadowed meaning that you have two rules maybe uh one is a uh slash 16 and the other one is a slash 24 within that slash 16. that slash 24 will never be hit we say that's a, a shadowed rule meaning you're never going to hit that rule and these are things that uh just generally make uh you know network management more complicated right it's it's bad hygiene it makes the policy base more complicated and it increases the time that you're going to spend every day making network changes. And then we show that information as a uh, as a trend over time here, right? So that you can demonstrate that as you're cleaning up these sort of, uh, you know, unhygienic policies, uh, you can see a, a trend over time and, and actually demonstrate uh, an improvement in security. Similarly, we have rules for optimization. These are things that, um, you know, maybe can can be uh, changed a little bit uh, just to, you know, increase your security, increase the documentation of the rule. So things like not having a comment or not having a rule name. And finally, down here, we have compliance trends. Now, I mentioned that, that we do that stuff out of the box. We also give you the ability to set sort of custom compliance requirements, and that's actually a big part of what we do. So what we're seeing here are these trends over time, and uh, we'll see in a few minutes exactly uh, how these violations are configured and detected. But again, here we can see rules with uh, violations and we can see our compliance trends over time. Now, we can drill into this and actually see the, the rules, right? The security policies that are behind all of this. And we can do that by uh, coming over here and going to the rule viewer. We also have these predefined queries right here on the dashboard that can help get you started in querying your policy base. So let's go for rules with high permissiveness. And you can see here that's going to drop us over into our rule viewer. And we have this uh, query bar up here where you can type in uh, queries to search for uh, individual rules. So let's look for high permissiveness rules where the vendor is Cisco. Now, permissiveness, as you'll see when we look at these rules, is something that uh, we calculate automatically based off of uh, exactly what it sounds like, how permissive is the rule, right? So a rule with, um, uh, you know, a lot of anys, uh, any source, any destination, any service, it's going to have very high permissiveness, something with, uh, you know, very explicit slash 32s when individual service will be low, and there's a, a, you know, a continuum in between. So here we can see just a basic search for highly permissive rules uh, for Cisco devices. And let's just grab one of these, just to look at this as an example here. So you're going to see in this policy or in this in this rule here exactly what you would expect to see, right? Sources, destinations, services. We also have metadata that we track here. So this is metadata that can be added uh, inside of Tufin, things like technical owner and description. Here's that certification status I talked about. We can see up here, we have this uh, permissive so high. We can see this rule is not shadowed. And we can see we have critical violations. That goes back to the violations that we saw right there um, on, the, uh, on the dashboard. And if we actually uh, click on this here, it's gonna show us what these, uh, what these violations are. So we can see that uh, in this case, we have oh, 95 violations. So that's, uh, that's probably something that we would, uh, we would need to address there. So before we uh, dive into exactly we're calculating these, I want to show you one more thing, one more thing that we can do with this uh, policy data. Because we have all the policy data, because we understand the routes, the interfaces, and the, the policies that are connecting all these, we can build a very accurate topology map. And the important thing about this topology map is that it's showing you all the connectivity that is possible. So we're not relying on network traffic to build out a topology map. 
we're actually showing you the the what could be right this is all of the rules and interfaces that are allowing traffic uh in between your your networks so this alone is is of tremendous value just to be able to get visibility into your network but the really cool thing is that we can actually query this topology map by source destination and service so just for uh brevity i'm just going to grab a predefined uh query here i'm going to load this so we can see in this case we're querying um for a uh, an epg in cisco aci as the source uh ip address is the destination and we'll just leave the service as any and we'll hit find path and it's going to tell us two things it's going to tell us one is there a routable path from source to destination in this case we see there is Second, it's going to tell us, is this traffic permitted or denied? And in this case, by, indicated by these icons here, we can see this traffic would be denied, right? So great for security, also great for troubleshooting. And if I want to know exactly why, I can right-click on this, and I can say Show Matching Rules. And I can see in this case, it's just getting dropped by the uh, implicit deny here in ACI. So now I know exactly where I need to go make those changes if this communication should be allowed, and it's not. The very last thing I want to show you is talk about how we, uh, at least the last thing I'm showing you is secure track, is uh, show you how we're calculating those compliance violations that we talked about. We have this concept of a unified security policy, and it basically allows our customers to define policy guardrails, sort of the expected state of what should and should not be permitted. And as you can see here, you can have multiple unified security policies, and most of our customers uh, normally do for different types of uh, enforcement and compliance purposes. Let's just grab our corporate security one here. And you can see that a USP is just built up of a, a matrix of zones, right? And these zones are just logical aggregations, similar, you know, devices, subnets, tags, groups, things like that. They're going to be subject to similar uh, policy requirements, right? And this can be integrated with an IPAM to pull all this zone data in, where you can uh, define it manually if you wish. And we're seeing here, we're just uh, sort of setting the desired state, what should be permissible between here, right? So in this case, we see interzone traffic here, all should be allowed. Traffic between these two zones should be denied. Here, we can actually set um, more granular permissions, right? So we can either say what should be allowed or what should be blocked. In this case, we're saying, from this AWS zone to the zone in Amsterdam, we should only be allowing these services. And we could add more qualitative things as well. So we could say any policy has to have an explicit source, destination, and service, right? And then how severe is this? And what we do is every time we pull down the policy data, we're mapping the, the individual rules back to their zones, and we're looking at USPs and making sure that every single rule in your policy base does not violate uh, any aspect of your unified security policies. And if it does, that's when you see those violations both on the dashboard and in the individual rule. And you can create a ticket from there to go and uh, remediate that, or in some cases, create an exception for your unified security policy. So that's all I wanted to show you in Secure Track. I want to take a second to actually talk about Secure Change, which is our change automation process. So when we were talking about the the USP uh, and, and how we detect those violations sort of reactively, right? We're detecting violations and policies that already exist, and that's good, but it's not great. What would be great is if we could keep those violations from happening in the first place, catch them before they get provisioned out to our network. And that's one of the things that our uh, Secure Change product does with our uh, change automation. So uh, Secure Change really at a, at a very high level allows you to define a, a series of change workflows, right? What are the steps that I go through as an enterprise to affect certain changes, right? And you can build those out and they're very customizable. So if we just look at one simple firewall change request workflow, you can see in this example, we've built out seven steps, but this is all customizable based on your enterprise's particular uh, requirements, maybe you have different review requirements, different uh, approval steps, multiple approvers for certain subnets. That could all be built right into these customizable change workflows. All right, so let's take a look at one of these tickets that's actually been submitted and how this would go through one of our change request workflows. So in this case, uh, we can see if we jump back to step one here, it was a very basic request, just uh, one source subnet and one destination subnet 
over uh, two individual services. And you can see as this ticket has progressed through, this step is uh, automatic here. And we can see it's, uh, in this case, target and risk assessment, right? So we're going to identify using that topology map that we saw earlier. Or we're using that same technology on the back end to identify what the targets of this change need to be, right? So from this source, this destination, what, uh, what firewall devices am I going to uh, traverse? And we've automatically identified that. The other thing we've automatically done is that a risk assessment here. You see this red risk icon indicates that we do have risk. So if we click on that, we'll actually see um, the, uh, the potential violations of USPs. And in this case, uh, it's that there, there was no security zone matching, right? So we don't have a, uh, a USP to match this against. And in that case, that, that's a high severity, uh, high severity risk, right? Because we don't have anything to, to match it against. If we did have something to match it against, and there were violations, specific violations, it would identify the specific violation, tell you what the requirement is and how you're violating it. And then you can make a determination as to whether that risk should be accepted or, uh, or should you know, move forward with it. Now as we progress through, and we're here on the step five, you can see we're actually on the design and implementation. Again, because we have that knowledge of the topology and the existing policy base, we can actually help you design your changes. And so we've already done that in this step, but if we click on the designer, we can actually see based on what's already there, what changes need to be made line by line. So uh, for the Cisco router, we need to add a couple of rules here. And then for this ASA device, uh, we need to add uh, a couple of rules as well. And if we want to, we can even uh, click view rule to see what rule we are recommending uh, be made here. All right. So once the network team has come in, they had a chance to review the risk, review the policy, we could actually go and take that the last step. Uh, the last two steps of the change workflow are usually provisioning, where we'll actually push that change out, and that can be done via, um, uh, you know, a, a change window, or it can be done automatically, uh, immediately, and send that right out. And then we go back and we verify that that change was made correctly. And keep in mind that uh, we can integrate with any um, uh, ITSM solution. So, uh, you know, ServiceNow, for example, can front end this process. So your user experience is the same. They're going to ServiceNow to request this change. And then your network team just uh, utilizes Tufin on the back end to actually uh, design and implement these, uh, these network changes. So that was a really quick overview uh, of the solution. Obviously, we're going to talk about places where you can get some more information. Uh, I wish we had uh, time for more of a demo, uh, but I'm going to wrap it up with a, a couple more quick slides. All right, so that was a really brief demo. I wish we had time to uh, to go over a lot more features because there's, there's just so much more that I, I, I wish we could show today. Uh, but obviously, we're going to have some links for you to uh, check out uh, if you'd like some more information or if you'd like to contact us and, and schedule a, a personal demo. So I'd like to just wrap it up by talking about our partner ecosystem. You can see that uh, you know we're known as a as a you know network security policy company, but we really integrate with um, technologies across the enterprise security stack, and uh, for a lot of really unique use cases, vulnerability management, security operations, and really it, it helps enterprises overall, just even outside of the network security team, r reduce the risk of, of vulnerability exposure, lessen the impacts of, of security incidents simplify the management of a very dynamic you know cloud and hybrid network and as we looked at uh e even streamline change management uh even further so with that i appreciate everybody's time and i will turn it back over to doug thanks john and um, i think it's one of our more interesting partnerships because it's not just our firewall product that you work with you work with all of our firewall products you work with cisco uh, infrastructure products like like routing technology, like ACI. And so customers that use multiple Cisco products can use your platform for the use cases that you've shown us. So I would encourage anybody who wants to learn more about Tufin and about our partnership to visit any of the links you see on this slide. And with that, I'll wrap it up. Thank you for listening.